Hello. This is a coil and it turns into vapor, into steam, and then it steams away, so to say, and fades out. It's a play blast of an animation which is in the general settings of um, Maya. You find it under the content browser, under FX and particles. I'll show you in a second. Um, it uses a few tricks. One trick is, for example, here you see the shading of the coil in the, uh, with a ramp and different colors going from yellow over uh, red to blue. And uh, a few s uh, frames later, the coil is disappearing and the particles with the same colors take over and then they evaporate. Actually, there's a break here, which is barely visible when you play the animation in real time, but uh, it's not really sexy. It's, it's just a little fake here in, in that scene. Okay, the scene is here. <clears throat> I found it under Windows General Editor's Content Browser, and here you have FX and N particle examples, and it's that example here. Uh, we don't want to do anything with this scene other than uh, inspecting briefly what's in that scene. When I pick the object which is called Surface to Steam Volume Axis Field 1 and then Windows General Editors and Hypergraph Connections, I get the connections within that scene. So I have a a starting point, the time node. The time node sends signals to something which is called surface to steam volume axis, that's just uh, the object here, and it uh, goes further here. Of course it goes even further, this surface to steam particle shader sends uh, informations back and forth to other objects so it's getting pretty complex here you but here you could analyze the scene you could also go uh, analyzing the scene by doing this uh, going from one node to another and then checking what's happening in the attribute editor anyway um, the the scene here if I go back to frame number uh, one uh, it has that coil just to give you an example of uh, the of the animation curves here and you see two dots here. So uh, with this icon here we can move from keyframe to keyframe. This one for example moves to the keyframe at frame number four and um, we don't know what it actually does here, what the keyframe is about because we have so many parameters. Which, which one could we uh, open in order to find what this keyframe is about? Let's go to the next one so it obviously has to do with visibility, but um, in order to not guess but find out precisely, we go to Windows with this thing selected and the um, and the keyframes visible. We go to Windows, Animation Editors, and open the Graph Editor. And the Graph Editor tells us what this is about. It's a straight line from Visibility 1, which means visible, to whoop, down to zero. That's a zero here. So the value goes from 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and then at frame 8, that is frame 8, it goes to zero. It makes the um, coil invisible. And here is the visibility, and uh, that's uh, how you find out what this keyframe thing is about. So let's create a house which is made of particles. Uh, it's a simple version and without the tricks of the example we just saw. So we create a polygon cube. We press the key F in order to focus on that polygon cube. Right mouse button and faces. We pick the top face. And now under the polygon modeling window we find the extrude here. You also find it under the in the menu set for the polygon modelings if you go to modeling here. Okay, so we extrude this and 
we move it a little bit up and scale it like this so we have a house it's basically all right mouse button object mode so this is the house we have and uh, we move it a little bit upward and scale it up so it gets a little bit bigger like this this is our house now we create a new material an Arnold standard surface shader which is kind of reflective here we don't see it here but uh, it is there the specular color it creates highlights when we render it oh there's no light in the scene that's the reason I guess so we reduce that specular weight to zero uh, and the transmission which is one section below currently has the weight zero that means the the house is not transmitting any light it's just opaque but we will um, reduce the opaqueness and uh, set the uh, transmission rate to almost uh, one one would make it totally invisible but now it's sort of shining here through um, let me press alt b and alt b again and alt b again um, to have uh, the black background color because the particles start with a white color now we pick we select that object and go to under FX N particles we are not creating an emitter in the center of the scene that would be this command instead we emit from an object and now choose the option box the option box in the default settings uh, looks like this the emitter type would be omnidirectional just ignoring that surface but we want it to uh, the particles to be emitted from the surface so we pick surface here and we can leave the rest as it is and apply and close so this is what we get now the particles rain to the ground let me extend this range to 1000 so we can see what's going on uh, we don't want the particles to fall down to the floor instead we want them to stick to the house there are two ways to fix this uh, the first uh, way to do it would be to go to the nucleus node and reduce the gravity from 9.8 which is the real world gravitation to zero but if we do this we reduce the gravity for the whole scene and in case we have other particles which we uh, can put into into the scene later they would all have no gravity that's not really what is we, for this purpose it would be totally all right but here well let's go to particle shape instead and under dynamic properties you find ignores the solver gravity so it's only our particles here which ignore the gravity which is in the scene so they flow away from the from the house how long do they live let's close the dynamic properties for now and go to the lifespan they live forever so they will fly off and live forever we want them to represent the shape of the house so we don't want them to fly too far so we want them to die uh, at a random range for example between one second and say five seconds so the particles will not shoot out so far because they'll die with a random value between 1 and 5 now we want more particles obviously where do we find them here we have the count and the count is grayed out that means currently we have 124 particles in the scene but we cannot change anything here and that's natural uh, so the count is just a counter it doesn't uh, allow us to change any values here because 
how many particles are emitted is a matter of the emitter. It's not something of the particle. The emitter as such is not dynamic. Uh, it doesn't fall down or anything, not in our case. You can make an emitter fall down, but basically the emitter just emits particles. So we click on the um, emitter. We Here we have the surface. So if we had forgotten to uh, choose surface in the option box previously, we could fix it now. Uh, and here we have the particles per second. That's 100. That's not very much. Let's type in 10,000. Is that 10,000? I think so. So the thing looks like this. And you see the particles shoot off from the faces of our object. Our object has only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight faces. So um, this is the top uh, face here, which we left. Um, so they are shooting off here. That's not what we want either. But uh, now we go to particle shape again and to the dynamic properties. And here is the crucial value. It's the conserve value. So if we run the animation, which actually is a simulation, and reduce the conserve value, the particles will go back to the house where they came from. And this is what we wanted to achieve. We wanted to achieve a house which is made of geometry, but we want to see it from particles only. And now is the moment where we can hide the cube. Under the cube is the emitter, because the cube is, hierarchically I mean, the cube is the emitter. So we can hide it by pressing Control h so it's hidden, and now we have the pure particle house here. By the way, Arnold does render particles under certain cir circumstances. It does not uh, render blobby surfaces and other things you can make with particles in Maya. But uh, if you create a light, like an area light here, um, rotate it, tilt a little bit, tilt it a little bit and move it up and scale it up and you can render it with Arnold and it will show you the house like this. Well, it doesn't look exactly the way as it does here in the viewport but uh, it does its job and you have to try out to work with colors and the colors are here. You. Uh, pick the particles, close all the tabs here and under shading you find the, the, the render types and as I said before the blobby surface for example which is quite nice cannot be rendered by Arnold I would be amazed if it would be actually Arnold tries to do something <laughs> with it <laughs> uh, well, that, that's a typical Maya thing. Um, you can have a multipoint uh, thing with um, s an amount of counts here, three, p three particles per particle, so to say. Uh, but let's stick to points here. And uh, slightly further down is the color. And the color is... Uh, it, uh, you, you can easily uh, use a ramp. For example, a ramp going from red to white and it doesn't show up here because uh, it's con currently constant so I think it's uh, set to that value here. Um, instead you can um, input the age so the young particles when they were just generated are red and they become more and more white the older they get. So this is a house made of particles. Maybe you want to move in.